Anytime you complain or criticize something in the game industry, there's someone close at hand to say, let the buyer beware. Let me know how you feel in the comments below. But first, my opinion. I'm Tarmac, and this is Feature Creep. Caveat Emptor has become the apologist go-to for a quick attempt at shutting down criticism that they don't like. The instant you complain about something, you'll be flogged with the phrase, let the buyer beware, as an attempt to push the blame of something into your lap. Unfortunately for those who use it, that's not what Caveat Emptor means. I've seen this everywhere, but most recently in a discussion about indie developer Wooly and his game Cube World. I'm going to preface this by saying that I bought into early access for Cube World, and while I hold no animosity toward Wooly at all, as the game was fun for a while, I think he's made some huge mistakes, and I'm unlikely to be involved with any future attempts at early access that he does. Alright, now Caveat Emptor holds its origins in real property or buildings and land for those not familiar with legal terminology. The premise being that buyers don't necessarily have as much information as sellers about a particular item and that some information may be hidden from the buyer by the seller. An example could be something along the lines of water damage hidden by new drywall. In the legal world, Caveat Emptor is a legal principle whereby the buyer cannot be compensated for defects after the sale unless it could be proven that the seller actively concealed them, which rapidly turns into a case of fraud. This then moved on to basic goods, return policies, and so on. The US certainly partakes in this practice, but the UK, for example, essentially has no Caveat Emptor because of the Sale of Goods Act 1979 that I've mentioned before. This act forces warranty of goods that are defective. So, back to video games. I was recently told that my disappointment in the lack of updates and communication relating to Cube World is my fault because I should have known that the developer didn't communicate very often. And I always come back to the same set of points. Criticism is not subject to Caveat Emptor. I don't have to censor my critique because of an outmoded seller protection mechanism. And I don't understand the logic behind customers defending this as an attack tactic, other than confirmation bias and a lack of any argument of substance. I've heard the buyer beware argument laid at the feet of Diablo 3 players, SimCity players, and those who get stung by expensive DLC packs and free-to-play titles as well. And in every case, it's touted by people as a way of shutting up criticism as though to say you have no right to complain because it's your fault for buying something. Remember, what Caveat Emptor means is that you don't have a legal recourse in the event a defect is identified that was not intentionally concealed. It doesn't mean that you can't make your displeasure at that defect being present known. It doesn't mean that you can't criticize or otherwise complain to the party responsible in hopes that they resolve your issue. Consumer critique is a very powerful thing. It has pulled SimCity offline, removed the Diablo 3 auction house, caused Ubisoft to rethink DRM, made EA try not to be the worst company in America for a third year running, and so many other things. Yes, we are all responsible for our own money, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with making our displeasure known when issues we perceive as negative come to light. The fact that people should have known better or should have done more research is irrelevant when there are problems that need to be fixed. And I feel bad for Wooly because I do understand that he's just an indie dev who got in over his head with the hype train that arrived at his doorstep for Cube World. However, I also feel bad for the customers who have bought Alpha Access to Cube World only to have a single update in the last 10 months and nothing else but a handful of tweets that say little more than it's still being worked on. This situation is a problem for both sides. Players want more Cube World, and Wooly, I hope, wants to give them a good experience. To deny that these are issues is to miss the whole point of the debate. Where do you stand on the caveat emptor let the buyer beware idea? Do customers of early unfinished titles lose all rights of expectation the moment they drop some coin, or are there some responsibilities and expectations that they get to keep? And where is that line drawn? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. These episodes are regular on my channel, so if you like them, maybe hit that subscribe button to keep a watchful eye on Feature Creep. That's all I have to say. Tarmac out. <laughs>